Hi guys, today we're gonna be looking at the Azold G Crusader. For those of you who are already subscribed and already check out my videos, you will have seen that I've recently done an Azold review. That was the Azold G Reformer. This is the G Crusader. It's much the same, but totally different. This is a special half mechanical switch. Uh, same sort of thing as before, just so you guys who haven't seen the other video know, the half mechanical switch has a cherry top, so replaceable keycaps, uh, but it is in fact a rubber dome underneath uh, that you are compressing. So the, the way the housing works, it gives a much more linear push, a much more uh, responsive push on the rubber domes, but they are still rubber domes. This is not a mechanical keyboard. This is what they call a half mechanical keyboard. So just having a quick look around the box here, uh, the Azul G Crusader, you can see, well, you can probably tell from the size of it, this is a substantial keyboard. Uh, this one includes a wrist rest, even though it's difficult to see on the outside of the box here. It's got some really gamery sort of designs on the outside. Here's a quick uh, F key indicator thing. We'll play with the volume thing once we're inside of it. On the outside, we can see that it's uh, full functional keys, stable and heavy, selectable backlight color. So this is a cheap RGB board, uh, multifunction, flexible half mechanical key switches, replaceable keycaps, as I mentioned, and supports multiple OSs. Nothing on the back. Uh, this says the same thing. And we're back to the F keys. Uh, just before we get inside of it, functional macro keys. That's a, a thing about this keyboard that makes it different from the G Reformer. This G Crusader has uh, macro keys along one side. What this tells us, well, there's a couple things. One, it's got a big record button. Uh, we'll get more into this later, but with record, you can record up to four macros. But this is an onboard programmable keyboard. These are, this is not a software programmable board. So you can't change the programming of the keyboard from the computer. You need to do it uh, by pressing record and then typing the keys that you want and then locking it in. I'll look more into how to do that uh, later on in the video. But for now, know that this is uh, an onboard programmable keyboard. And if you haven't seen my video about what a programmable keyboard is or the different types, you should check that out now. All right, well, time for me to get inside this and to see really what's going on. The user manual uh, from the last Azolt was huge uh, and full color as this one is. Uh, this one will tell us more about how to do the macros, but a lot of you guys commented that you didn't want me to go through the manual in as much detail as I did last time. So uh, Julie noted, I won't do that just now. All right, here is the board itself. And this underneath that you can't see me playing with, that's gonna be the wrist rest there. And that's the wrist rest, that's the board. I'm gonna get rid of this giant cardboard. Oh, so a quick play there, but let's just have a look at exactly what we've got here. This is a full-size keyboard with macro switches down one side. Uh, the arrow keys unusually have a was uh, written on these keys. I'm not sure why you'd ever make these keys do was, but that's a design choice. Uh, this one, unlike the G Reformer, has a full-size backspace and more of an ISO-shaped enter. The other one had a, a big-ass enter on it. A little bit unusual here uh, for people in North America, the backslash is located there. I mentioned in my previous video about the G Reformer that it is unusual that they've chosen to have cherry compatible stems. That's a cherry compatible stem there. So you can fit other keycaps on it. Uh, but what they've done with these keys here is made them huge and unlike a standard keyboard layout. So. Uh, these keys are impossible to find as far as I know. I, I've never seen another one be that size. On the, that's interesting that this wasn't actually properly seated in. You can see that the, you can see that it still has the lube on the, it's still in big dots because this wasn't properly inserted and so it wasn't actually tracking along the line that it was meant to. But again, this is an unusual space bar. This space bar cannot easily be replaced with a stock spacebar from a keycap manufacturer, which 
you would typically find if you were to buy a Cherry MX compatible key switch. So let's say you go to uh, Signature Plastics or another one of the manufacturers, this, this space bar will be unlike any of theirs. Back at the keyboard, the feel, as I reported last time, this is, uh, it's a, for rubber domes, this is easily the best rubber dome I've ever, I've ever touched. You know, these, these are high quality feeling keyboards as opposed to the uh, cheap rubber domes that you get with, you know, your standard computer. With this one ringing in around the 60 to $70 mark, it's starting to get pretty expensive. And for what it is, I'm not sure that I recommend it, but it is definitely a big step up from the rubber domes that you've got with your home PC. Just moving on here quickly to the wrist rest. Ooh, the wrist rest is nice. Well, the wrist rest has like a, I don't know if you can quite tell here, but you see that's like a hard plastic. And this is like a soft plastic. It's quite, it's quite nice feeling actually. It is quite nice. Just gonna, just gonna figure out how to put this in. Well, that looks like that's it. Now, I, you know, as a guy who uses a wrist rest, these slopey ones always confuse me. Uh, the slope means that my hands want to slide off of it, and we're still the angle of it means that my wrist isn't supported at the same level as the keys, which it would be if this was tipped up in some way, but instead my hands are lower uh, than the keys, which means I might as well just be on the table. It's nice looking though, and I can imagine uh, why it, some people would find it desirable. I, I personally am gonna remove it now. I don't think it's necessary. Let's just uh, talk about the construction of the board quickly. Um, it's plastic on the back, as opposed to the G Reformer, which was metal on the back. Uh, this one does have flip up feet, uh, cheap feeling, but they are there. Um, it has this blue anodized aluminum top, but as you can see when I pulled off the keycap here, the aluminum top is just uh, decoration. The key switch itself isn't attached to it in any way. Uh, besides providing a bit of weight, it's completely unnecessary. This keycap, the keycaps are ABS double, uh, AB, sorry, ABS single shot painted transparent keycaps. They not only are super light, they don't feel particularly good. And I would recommend that you get a whole new keycap set, but you will be hard pressed to find one that will fit this keyboard. Still, you can get some novelty keycaps and find your way into the world of mechanical keyboards that way. Let's plug it in and get a look at some of those lighting effects. So there's three selectable colors and this should make it brighter or darker, but that's There's the circulating one. All right. So let's just do macros here. Uh, press the red record. And the rec LED should be flashing, it's not. Oh, that LED is blinking. What am I doing? Okay, this LED, so there, oh, okay. Now the record light is blinking. I press M1, now I can record my macro. So let's say I do S-K-I-W-I-T-H-P-E-T-E, -E. rec. And I press M1, and it worked. And it worked. Okay, that works. So on keyboard programmable macros work. Great, that's how they work. The other thing to talk about is this uh, volume Rocker, it's just a rocker. You see the wheel doesn't spin around. It only goes it only goes that far or that far. And it seems to have no effect on my Linux based computer. Let's just check out what these do. They don't do anything in Linux either. Overall, my final word on this board is if you're looking for a gaming keyboard and RGB is very important to you and you'd like some simple macros, around the fifty to seventy dollar mark, this one might well be your choice. Do I recommend it? I'm um, the same as I felt about the G Crusader, really. It's 
it's better than you think it would be, but it's still not as good as it probably could be. If you've got a limited budget and you really want something that's Cherry MX compatible, at least some of the keys are so that you can start to play with artisans and maybe switch out a couple of specific keys. But unfortunately, you won't be able to switch out your whole key set, so the point's kind of lost. I'm not really sure who this board is for, and I'm a little bit confused by it. I don't think that this is a keyboard enthusiast board. I don't think that this would be the first board that you should get if you're thinking about joining the mechanical keyboard community, which, by the way, is a thriving community and pretty awesome and insane. This is supposed to be a gamer's keyboard, and I think that at the $50 to $70 mark, you might actually be better off just finding one with pure mechanical keyboard switches. Like I say, it's, it's better than I thought it would be, but it's still not really, not really good enough. I don't know, do you guys have one of these boards? Do, what do you think about it? Have you been using it for long? How do the keycaps last? How does, how does the macros work for you? Are, are you happy with it? Let us know in the comment section below. If you guys have any questions about this board, let, us, let me know in the comment section below. If you found this video particularly useful, don't forget you can buy me a cup of coffee in the about section. Please support this channel by buying through the links to Amazon and supporting it through Patreon. Thanks to all of you who already do. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you again soon. I'll keep playing with this thing and let you know how it goes, really. Thanks again.